Normally when you think of a computer, you might imagine something like this. You have a mouse, a keyboard, a monitor, and so on. But what about game consoles? You wouldn't consider those computers, right? Well, one company thought differently. There actually exists a peripheral that turns the Atari 2600 into a computer. Let's take a look at it. What's going on guys? It's Poger coming at you with another video. So we're going to be talking about some computers today. So if you've seen a few of my videos and you like what I do, hit that subscribe button right there. It only takes a second, but it helps the channel grow. We're very close to 8,000 subscribers. We might actually already be there, but I just wanted to say in January, we were just over 1,000 subscribers, so we've made some great progress and I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. And if you didn't know, we do have a Discord server. If you want to join, just go to discord.poacher.net or just click on the link in the description. Anyway, I think you want to hear about some computers now. With the release of the Atari 2600 in 1977, Atari was already thinking about the future. They thought the console would be obsolete in three years, so they immediately began development on a new unit. Ray Kassar had recently become the CEO of Atari, and he expressed interest in competing against other computers at the time, including the Commodore PET and Apple II. Atari began development on two different computers. The first one was Candy. Originally, this was going to be a regular game console, but ended up becoming a more budget-friendly computer. This one was going to be meant for kids. The other console they were working on was Colleen. This one was going to be a full-fledged computer that was more powerful than Candy. Eventually, Candy was released as the Atari 400 and Colleen was released as the Atari 800. The Atari 400 was the budget model that was more bare bones. The keyboard was completely flat and it was more like a touchscreen. They went with this design because it was waterproof and kids would be less likely to break it. The unit also supported RF output, so the screen quality was limited. The 800 on the other hand was more like a normal computer that came with a real keyboard. It also supported composite and S-Video which meant you could get much better picture quality on this thing. So yeah, the Atari 800 was much better, but both units supported a very similar lineup of games and programs. So where did these names come from? On paper, it seems like the Atari 400 and 800 would be worse than the 2600 even though they came out after because of the names alone. But the names came from the amount of memory the units originally were going to come with. The Atari 400 was going to come with 4 kilobytes of RAM, while the 800 was going to come with 8 kilobytes. However, when RAM prices dropped, Atari ended up shipping the 400 with 16 kilobytes and the 800 with 48 kilobytes, way more than originally intended. When you boot up either of the computers, this is what you get. It's not like today's generation of computers, there's no graphical interface here. In order to run commands, you have to know Atari Basic. This was how you gave commands and ran programs. So while this doesn't look like much, there was software for these computers. These units had programs for financing, word documents, music, drawing, and more. So these computers could perform a lot of tasks if you had the copy of the program. But the Atari 400 and 800 could also play games, and this is where they really shined. For two units that came out in 1979, the games looked incredible. There was nothing like this at the time. These units were far more capable than any other home computer at the time. Let's take a look at a few games. Here's Donkey Kong. The graphics look way more arcade accurate and it actually has all four levels, including the Cement Factory level. This is very impressive because not even Nintendo's home console version had it. The jumping is also a lot better in this one. In the 2600 version, the jumping is so choppy looking, but here it's much smoother. The only issue I have is with level 1. I'm not sure why so many home versions can't fit the entire stage on the screen. So overall, this is arguably the best home console version of Donkey Kong at the time, possibly even better than the Famicom one. Now let's look at Star Raiders. This is the Atari 800 game everyone talks about. So it's a space simulator where you have to destroy all the Xylon ships. 
For its time, it's amazing to see a first-person perspective like this. This title really showcases what the Atari 800 can do. Let's try Moon Patrol. This is a near-perfect arcade port. Now, the Atari 2600 version that GCC made was great, but this one has much smoother parallax scrolling and it looks much closer to the arcade version. Once again, we can really see what the 800 can do here. So, I'm not sure why, but Crystal Castles didn't get a lot of home console versions. The 2600 version was great considering the limitations, but it doesn't really feel like a super accurate arcade port. The 800 version, however, is much better. For the first time, it feels like I'm really getting the arcade experience. Graphically, it looks amazing. It even has level transitions. So if you want to play Crystal Castles on a home console, this is the one you want. So while these are great units, there's a reason why they might not have been a good option for some consumers. For one, these are expensive. The Atari 400 retailed at $550, while the 800 retailed at $1,000. Meanwhile, the Atari 2600 was only $190. So, if you're a money-oriented person, you're gonna want the 2600. Also, while these computers were more user-friendly than other ones at the time, they were not devices you could just pick up and play. You had to learn how to use it. So if the computers didn't appeal to you, Atari would release a 5200 in 1982. This was basically the same hardware, but just the console instead of the whole computer. I would recommend it, but this console comes with its own problems. With that said, there was a company that was interested in providing the Atari computer experience to consumers at a fraction of the price. But how? Because computers were expensive, the company Spectra Video wanted to make a cheaper alternative. They focused their attention on the Atari 2600. But this isn't a computer. It doesn't use a keyboard or any computer-related accessories, and it doesn't have an operating system. It needs games in order to do anything. So how would you make this into a computer? Well, they came out with the ComputerMate SV10. It looks like just a keyboard, but it's actually an all-in-one unit that contains the operating system and all the programs that this thing can run. They went with a flat keyboard just like the Atari 400. You can plug it into the cartridge slot on the 2600 and it basically runs like a game. But it's not just a 2600 game. It actually contains an extra 2 kilobytes of RAM and 16 kilobytes of ROM space. Plus, it's a keyboard, so you can type things on it. It has some similarities to the StarPath Supercharger, where it provides the 2600 extra power to perform tasks that it normally couldn't. But the CompuMate doesn't take cartridges. Everything you need is already built in. This unit retailed at $80, and since the 2600 was $190, you're essentially buying a computer for $270. That's a pretty big discount considering the so-called budget-friendly Atari 400 was $550. But, what can this thing actually do, and is it worth it over buying the 400 or the 800? Well, let's take a look. Like with the other computers, the interface is basic, no pun intended. You have to know what commands to type in order to open programs. By hitting Function M, for example, you can open the music program, where you can write and play songs. When you hit Function Graphic, you can go to the paint program where you draw. Really ambitious that they made a drawing program for the Atari 2600, especially considering the shape of the playfield graphics. Because the Microsoft Basic language is built in, you're able to write very simple programs with this thing. In fact, at Atari age, some people have shared some of the programs they've written in Basic. So when you factor in Microsoft Basic, this unit has unlimited potential, but the CompuMate doesn't come with that much built in. It's just the drawing and music programs. It's not a super useful machine compared to the 400 and 800. Plus, this thing didn't have its own lineup of games. Spectra Video did release two separate programs for this peripheral, but that was it. The CompuMate is a really cool accessory, but it's still powered by the 2600, and that console really isn't meant to be a full-fledged computer. The Atari 400 and 800 were well ahead of their time. The capabilities of both of these units far exceeded anything that was out at the time. You can especially tell when looking at the games. 
Donkey Kong, for example, is arguably the best home console version of the game at the time. Now, with the success of these computers, Spectra Video released the Compumate. While this is a cool unit, it only has two built-in programs with no option for additional games. But it is really cool to see what the 2600 could do if it were a computer, even if it wasn't very much. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.